Hey guys, how's it going? It's attorney Kadisha Rowe with American Legal Immigration Center in the DMV of the United States, bringing you another episode of Immigration Dream University. Guys, if you have recently subscribed to my channel, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, we have definitely grown exponentially just this month of July alone. Um, I remember back in February or March, I think it was, and I was saying that I wanted to reach 100 by the end of the summer, and lo and behold, we hit 100. The beginning of July, actually July 4th, which is, you know, Independence Day here in the United States, we hit 100, and we've just been steadily climbing ever since. So thank you so much uh, for everybody who's been riding with me since day one, and along the way to all of the new subscribers. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing, and I will definitely bring you guys more good, up-to-date information information to come. If this is your first time tuning in or maybe you've tuned in before but you haven't subscribed, I would greatly appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button down below. Also hit the thumbs up uh, to let me know that you like the videos and comment if you have a question or want to share some thoughts about the content of the video. Alright guys, so for today's topic we are going to talk about requirements for getting your citizenship. So this is usually a very exciting time for many people because you've been a lawful permanent resident for some time now and you meet the qualifications to become a United States citizen. We know that there are many benefits that come along with becoming a citizen, including the right to vote, which you do not have when you are just a lawful permanent resident, but you do get that right once you become a United States citizen. This can also be very daunting for some people because we know that if English is not your first language and for many immigrants it is not, we know that you do have to take the um, English proficiency test and then you also have to take the civics test. And those two things are the qualifications in order for you to become a United States citizen. So I have been getting recently questions uh, from people inquiring, you know, they've reached this stage where they qualify in all other regards, but they want to know, do they still have to meet these uh, civics requirements and the educational requirements in order to become a citizen? And the good news is that there are some exceptions. So there are two requirements in order for you to become a United States citizen. One is the educational requirement, and specifically that means that you have to understand English, you have to know how to read, write, and speak English. And then the second portion of that is you have to be familiar with the United States history and government. So two requirements, the educational, which has to do with English, and then the second, which has to do with the U.S. history, um, your knowledge um, of U.S. history and the government. So if you are 50 years old, or older, and you have resided in the United States as a lawful permanent resident for at least 20 years, you still have to take the civics portion of the exam, which means that you have to know U.S. history and about U.S. government, but you are exempt from taking it in English. So you can take it in the language of your choice. If you choose to take it in a language other than English, be sure that you bring an interpreter with you. That interpreter should know whatever language you choose to take it in and English. Um, they should be proficient in both and also just a tip make sure that they look over the questions ahead of time because not all words translate easily from one language to another and so there may be some questions with words or terms that they're not familiar with make sure that they know this information ahead of time before they go to the interview so that they don't mess you up in the process okay the next um, requirement is if you are age 55 years old or older and you've been a lawful permanent resident for 15 years at the time of filing, then you are exempt from taking the uh, English portion of the test. So again, you do have to take the civics portion, but you can take it in the language of your choice. So there are two scenarios that I just explained. One is if you're 50 years old or older and you've been a lawful permanent resident for at least 20 years, um, and you, it does state that you have to reside also in the United States as a lawful permanent resident for at least 20 years. The other is if you are 55 years old or older and you've resided in the United States for at least 15 years. If you are 65 years old or older, um, you are exempt from taking the English exam. You do have to take the civics exam. Um, that's pretty much barely ever waived for you, so you do have to be familiar with U.S. history and U.S. government. However, when you're 65 or older, um, the officers will tailor it specifically to you. So they do make special accommodations in terms of how much knowledge you need to have regarding U.S. history and government. Um, so you're still going to have to know something, but you may not, you're not required to know as much as if you were someone in a younger category. 
Okay, and are there exceptions entirely to both the English and the civics test? The answer to that is yes, but you do have to get a certification from a medical professional. Um, it has to be an MD, so a medical doctor, or a doctor of osteopathy, so they have to have an MD or a DO after their name, or a clinical psychologist, um, and they would have to fill out what's called Form 648, and that is the medical disability certification that says that for whatever reason, um, they're asking that you're not required to take either the English portion or the civics portion or both. Um, this is discretionary and so USCIS will make that determination if you are exempt from one portion of it um, and not the other or maybe you're gonna be exempt from taking both all together. So guys, I hope this information was helpful to you. If it was, please do like please do subscribe to my channel and please comment below. If you guys have any questions uh, about anything immigration related, please let me know and I will try to either address it in the comment section or I will make a video about it if it turns out that it's a common question or something that I feel that not a lot of people need to know. All right guys, so as usual, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.